Hey everyone and welcome to the Knit 2 uh, Sunday Studio, today's video. I'm tripping over my words, I didn't even get started. But anyways, what I want to do today, as promised, is to do a demonstration on pastel board. Uh, it's a surface made by ampersand and they have clay board, uh, aqua board, and pastel board, among other things. Pastel board, which by the way, spell check hates pastel board. It always wants to correct it, but it's spelled B-O-R-D. Uh, it, they are uh, sanded panels. They are on a, a masonite panel, so a nice rigid surface, and they're a sanded surface. And they come in a variety of colors, uh, white, a gray, and a tan color. And of course a variety of sizes, and I believe you can even get custom sizes, but uh, they are a great surface for pastel painting because they take a lot of abuse. It's a sanded surface and what is wonderful about it is that you can do a, a lot of wet underpainting techniques and you don't have to worry about it buckling. Obviously it's not going to buckle, it's a rigid surface. Uh, another wonderful thing about pastel board is the ease of framing paintings done on a pastel board. Um, this is a oops, a typical plein air style frame and we're having a discussion over uh, on one of the comments what where can you get plein air style frames well just search plein air style frames and you'll find a, a multitude of sources but I've gotten these at blick.com for an example kingofframe.com is a great source um, but Really, plein air style frame is simply a frame with a wider molding, so it's about three inches or more. Uh, what's nice about framing these with a pastel board is simply pop it in the frame, imagine I had glass, and you're done. You can use spacers, there's enough room to put a spacer if you want the pastel to sit away from the glass, or you can use the French uh, framing, French envelope method where you put it against the glass. That is a topic for another video, but I just wanted to share how easy it is for these boards to be uh, framed. The other thing that I like to do with them is reuse them. Now, what I thought I would do for today's video is to take an older painting that was not a success, in my opinion, wash it off, and then start over again. Well, however, I, and, I, and I put it under running water and I used an old brush to you know, wash off the pastel. Most of the time, you can get most of the pastel off. But what I discovered here that is that, and now I remember, I used ink and I use a uh, sharpening pen. I was really being playful. And I cannot get, this will not come up. This is it, it's not going anywhere. So I had to make a decision. Am I gonna go with my original plan and paint over this or am I gonna start over again? And I thought, you know what? This is what I do in the studio. These things, you know, you, you, you uh, try things, they don't always work and you, you make a plan, but you've gotta be prepared to let go. And I thought, well, this is a good lesson. I'm gonna take this even though I didn't get it all off and make it into a new painting, um, hopefully a better painting. So what do I do is I look at this, since I can't remove it, and I said, hmm, what could this be? The next step is I take a bunch of my reference photos, and I have a pile on the table, and I go through, these happen to be that I printed off from my recent trip to France, and I, and I look through these and I say, hmm, would any of these kind of fit in with the, what's happening on the, um, the board currently. And I did find one, and I'm gonna come back here. And this is the one I decided that would work with what's here on the, on the underpainting. Now, underpainting is a topic we're going to uh, go in depth in next month. So starting on Wednesday or so, we are going to look into the whole wonderful world of underpainting and so this was a wet underpaint uh, was a wet underpainting at one time so we're going to consider this the underpainting and I'm gonna, we're going to make it into this so the next thing I did after I selected my um, photo is I did a quick thumbnail and I just did it on a dry erase board and I basically looked at my photo and said okay where are going to be my big major shapes and how can I keep this painting simple. And then of course I selected the pastels that I'm going to use. So I've got a, a variety of darks, some sky colors, some light colors for the pathway, and of course I have a lot of greens and a lot of violets 
uh, which I took out my purple box that I'm going to use. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my little study and I'm going to take out a new pastel, which is a harder pastel, and I'm going to draw the major shapes. Let's see. I need to draw it in something that I'll be able to see, but that I'll be able to cover up as well. I don't know if I can see that one. Let's try this color. There we go. I'm just going to use this blue one. So we have this shape here. This is about the horizon line. We have another piece of land here, and then we have a distant kind of mountain shape, and then this was a green. And then we had um, an interesting kind of pathway that went through the lavender field. And I think I'll, like, I'll try to put that pathway in, because I like how we can see the edge of the lavender. Now notice I'm just totally ignoring the, the, the stuff that's underneath. I'm going to just paint right on top of that, basically reusing this board. So the next thing I want to do is I want to block in my darkest shapes, the darkest darks. And I think I'm going to just keep it simple and block in my darks with, that's a dark green, I would rather use a dark, here we go, a dark blue, new pastel. This is a dark tree shape, and one on this side. And then this lavender is in the shadow area, the shade, and the edge over here is in the shade. So I'm going to use the dark blue for these two areas. The next thing I want to do is block in the lightest shape. And the lightest shape in this painting happens to be the sky. So I'm going to use a lighter blue and block in the sky. Now, we are going to be talking a lot about underpainting and block-ins and how we choose colors. That's going to be coming up very soon. So basically what I'm doing here is putting in the extremes. Then I want to put in the most intense color. The most intense color is going to be the lavender. So I'll throw a little purple in here. And there's light on the lavender on the left side. So I'm going to put that in now so that I can remember. Remember, this is just the block in. And then I'm going to just give a layer of color all over the rest of the painting. And I think I'm going to just use a, um, let's use a violet down here in the shadow area of the pathway. And then a kind of sandy color on the pathway where it's hitting, getting some light. And we're going we're gonna to change this, but this is just the, the initial block in. The next thing I'm going to do is probably let's start and put some green in the block in because I've got to remember that there's going to be some green, especially where the sunlight is hitting the lavender. And then we've got that distant uh, mountain shape, so I'll put in a kind of a dull gray violet there and some green right there for the hillside that's in the foreground. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to be good now. Now a lot of times I will uh, wash this in, do another alcohol wash, or I might rub it in with a piece of pipe insulation, but I actually like how the red tone of the previous painting is peeking through, kind of giving a little bit of uh, interest to the different masses and kind of making a little bit of color harmony. So where you see the color peeking through here and here and here and here, that kind of unites everything. So I'm not going to rub it in and I'm not going to do another underpainting. I'm simply going to just keep painting. So that means I'm going to start in now with my softer pastels. And what I want to do first is reinforce the dark areas. So wherever I have dark shapes, I'm going to go ahead and add another layer of dark. And in this case, I'm adding a dark uh, blue. And I'm going to go ahead and put some of that dark blue in the shadow area of the lavender. And I'm going to put a little bit of that blue along the bottom of the path, because I don't want that path just to kind of uh, 
pour out of the paper. I kind of want to hold us in. So I'm going to throw the foreground into shadow just a little bit. So that's one layer. I want to add another layer into my dark. So I'm going to add a dark violet, dark purple. And the reason why I select purple is because I know I'm going to have a lot of purple in the painting itself. So it'd be nice to have it echoing um, in the darks. And wherever I have dark, I'm going to throw a little bit of this purple. So wherever I put the blue, I'm adding a little bit of the violet. Let's add another layer. Let's add a, a burgundy layer of dark. I want to just make sure that the darks I choose are the same value or close in value. And then that way they kind of play together nicely. All right. That is all the darks I'm going to put. And I ask myself now before I move on, is there anywhere that's darker than anywhere else? And if that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and put it with the darkest pastel that I have in my own, which happens to be a Terry Ludwig, what is uh, commonly referred to as the eggplant color. It's very dark. And I'm only going to put it here in this foreground area. Even though in my photo it looks dark in the distance, if I put it here, which I'll do just to show you, what ends up happening is this dark is the same as this dark, so it doesn't allow this tree to look like it's further back. So I'm going to end up having to make that a little bit lighter and keeping the darkest dark in the foreground. All right, now I'm ready to move on and add the green. So I've got some green in the um, shadowed area of the lavender. So I'm going to use a dark, cool green in this area. And as also, the trees are somewhat in the shadow. This big tree shape is in the shadow. So I'm going to use that darker, cool green. What is this one? I think that's black. I don't even know how that got in there. I, won't, I don't want to really use that. I'm going to use a warmer dark green on areas of the trees that are getting some sunlight. And also in areas in the lavender that are getting a little sunlight in the foreground areas. Right now it doesn't look much of uh, like much of anything. I'm going to go ahead and add some sunlight to the tree shape by adding a brighter, warmer green. And since some of this is in the shadow, I don't want to put too much of this in there. If I put it everywhere, then what ends up happening is it flattens out and it really ends up being nowhere. So you've got to be careful of that. And then I think I want to uh, reinforce the grayness of this distant hill side. I, that's, those are both pretty much the same. I want to make it a little bit lighter. So there's a light gray-blue there. And I think I want to add some green to this hillside, but it's a little bit further back than the one on the right, so I'm using a duller or more gray down green for this area. And now before I move on, I want to address the sky. <clears throat> so I'm going to add a darker blue to the sky, at the top of the sky, and I'm going to start to carve into this tree shape, or this area of trees, and do some negative painting to create some sky holes here in this area. And again, with sky holes, I tap and uh, kind of tap, put, I put it in and tap it with my finger, just so that it's not... Uh, so that's a, a, a solid shape. I'm going to add a little bit of a lighter blue and then a warmer blue as I get closer to the horizon. And then I want it to get lighter and warmer right at the horizon. That might be a little too light, but I'll put it in and then I'll come back with my sky color and just soften it just a little bit. All right, and then I will kind of. I'm going to come back and and uh, revisit the the tree shape in just a few minutes. But this is a good enough start. And now I'm going to move on to the foreground area. 
And I want to ask myself, did I really address the tree shapes enough? Well, I'm looking, as I'm looking at my photo, I see that um, it's getting a little more sunlight than I have indicated. So I'm going to add a little bit of brighter, lighter, bright, let's, let's say that again, lighter, but a little bit still cooler green for the distance. I don't want it to be too yellowy because it's supposed to be further back. Let's see. This side of the lavender is in shadow, so I don't want to use any um, bright or warm green in that area because it will then look like it's in the sunlight, so we don't want to do that. Um, Let's put the, sh the lavender in shadow, so I want to use a cooler, um, bluer violet. And in the distance, I'm going to make my marks go in horizontal bands, just so it can lay flat a little bit. This area here in the lavender is shadowed area. So I'm trying, my goal is to get this feeling that some of this lavender, like I'm walking down this path into the sunlight, so some of the lavender that I see is actually in the shadow. So in the shadow area, I can only use the cooler, bluer greens. And you can see that um, even though I had this painting already there, the water lilies, uh, and I couldn't get it all the way off, I still am not really having any trouble adding layers of soft pastel to this painting. So that's the beauty of working on the pastel board is it gives you a lot of um, uh, freedom to mess up, basically, because if you can mess up, you can, you can get yourself out of the mess because you have room to go. So I've got the shadow area. Now I'm going to put the turn the lights on, if you will. But I think before I do that, I want to address the pathway a little bit. <clears throat> I want to pull some shadow into the over the path. So I'm using a kind of a gray down violet. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of a blue gray on top of it and then a darker version of the path color so a kind of dark gold color in that area and now I'll use a lighter sandy golden color where I feel like it's going to be getting some light and as I go into the distance I've got to change my stick and use a different color and value and I'm using a kind of a, a, a lighter, more intense version of that sandy color and I think I'm going to make it even lighter as I go back into the distance like that. So that way this is going to be the sunlit area but the rest I want to kind of keep dull and have it in the shadow a little bit more but maybe there's a little bit of sunlight peeking through and little bits right in here and there's a little bit of sunlight peeking through so I'll add a, a lighter color there so that you can kind of get that feeling. Now let's go and finish the lavender. So before I put in the lavender I want to add some of the green that is in between the those rows. So I'm going to use a brighter but lighter one in the distance and I'm going to use a warmer, more sunlit green, let's see what this one is, in those areas that are getting, getting the sunlight. So I'm going to add the green stuff first, and then I'm going to go in and put in the, oops, that one is really, really yellow green, it really looks like sunlight on that area. So let's go ahead and put in the lavender. Now in my photo, the lavender in the sunlight was very light, almost almost pink. So I'm not sure I want to do that, but I, I'm going to put in kind of a warmish uh, um, red violet. 
and a little bit over here where there's sunlight getting on this side of the field just a little bit. And then I'm going to decide, hmm, do I want it to look like that really uh, pinkish? So I have a, uh, a very light red violet that I'm going to put in here and see if I if that makes sense. And I think it does because there was, what I remember was there was a lot of variety in the lavender, in the color of the lavender. Some of the lavender was um, more of a red violet, some of it was very blue and very dark. I'm not sure I like this yellow mark here. Let's pick a different green and see if that's better. And that one doesn't really give the warmth I want, but can I find something that's kind of in the middle? And this is a lot better. And then there would be a little bit of light on that side too. And then finally I'm going to add a little bit of, um, let's add some of that yellow green into the, this foreground pieces. And finally I'm going to come in and put a few bits and pieces of lavender, a few stalks if you will. And by putting in a few stalks, the idea is that our eye will fill in the rest and say, oh, okay, all of that purple stuff must be lavender because I see a few individual stalks and I can tell that that's a lavender plant. So that means all of that must be lavender. I don't need, I don't, the beauty is I don't have to paint every single uh, stalk for our eye to fill in and, and give us the information that we need to figure out what's happening in the painting. Um, we can go crazy and put in every stalk, so I have to kind of uh, bring myself into the picture and say, wait a minute, you've got enough lavender stalks. There are a few that are, what did I do with that light? There are a few light bits in here where it's really catching some of the sunlight. Now remember, when, I, when you're painting, the idea is you want to orchestrate the, the movement of the viewer's eye. So what I want to do is have you go down this path. But there's always something important to remember. A path should not lead you where there's nothing interesting to see. So right now this path kind of leads me right here and then I just stop and that's boring. So what can I do to make it a little more interesting for the viewer's eye? Well, I could... Um, kind of enhance the lavender right in here with a nice uh, pop of red violet. So that's kind of interesting, little bits and pieces of eye candy. So when you come over here, you actually see this nice color. Um, that's one thing. I could add maybe a, a, a hint of a little, a little building. There was uh, um, so many little sheds and houses and things in the lavender fields that were interesting and so this might be a good place for just a little hint of of uh, life so that's one thing you can do so when you come down the path you see the the nice little building over there um, so there's just different things you can play with but at this point is when I would stop the painting as usual step back, step away from the painting, and evaluate what's happening. How's my eye moving? Uh, do I have a good feeling of sunlight and shadow? And if I don't, what do I need to do to make it or to fix it? And so what I want to do for this video is actually stop now so that I can reevaluate it. I'll take a picture of it now, and then I'll share with you the finishing um, touches. But basically the idea for this video is you can take a painting that was not working and totally transform it and use what's underneath to make something new. And that's what I hope that to accomplish in today's video. So thanks for tuning in.